Bonjour et bienvenue. Uh, this is not a real on peut le dire episode. I was trying to make one. I shot it. I've got the voiceover. Everything's ready. And then the editing software kept crashing. And the reason I'm shooting this tonight is because the video I was planning to put on and to edit was actually an erratum, which is basically I made a mistake in last week's video on R. A couple of mistakes. Um, one is a genuine mistake. The other one is just I sort of used terms that aren't technical terms and now I wish I had used the technical terms and so I'm a bit peeved and I don't really want to leave it up up until uh, next Monday in order to try and convince the editing software to work and to uh, put up my corrections so hopefully on Monday you'll get the real deal and there'll be like a PowerPoint presentation and, lo and little animations and drawings and, and stuff but for tonight um, when I put the video up last week, something was bugging me and I couldn't quite figure out what it was. So then I made some more research throughout this week and figured out what was wrong. The genuine mistake that was made is a common misconception about where the R sound comes from. And I felt like it was probably because I couldn't feel it right. And I said it came from the throat. Um, but actually, if you do a French R, it doesn't really come from the throat. Um, so... You'll have a better version of this on the video next week, but you can see it actually comes from this area. So you've got your throat here, and then you actually have at the back of your mouth, you have your uvula here, and then the back of your tongue, and both of them will interact to make your French R sound. So that was the mistake I made in the video. Um, and this is the reason why I felt it was a bit confusing that I couldn't feel it when I did that. Um, the second item, which I didn't call its proper name, uh, is the distinction which, between soft and harsh consonants. And I knew when I said it that I was just making up a term. However, the real words should be voiced and voiceless consonants. And I want to use that rather than soft and harsh because A, these, well A, number one, these are the technical terms. So we need to get used to using the real wor words. Um, number two, if you say voiced and voiceless, you're just using descriptive language for those consonants, while soft and harsh hold a bit of a judgment to them, and consonants really aren't good or bad, they just are, and so I think, I think it's much better to just use the technical terms to describe them. So what I called soft consonants are actually voiced consonants, and the harsh ones are voiceless consonants. And so we'll look at, at that in more details next week hopefully if i manage to edit the video uh, like i want to but for now voiced consonants are consonants for which your vocal cords partly close and then that means when the air comes out your vocal cords will vibrate and so we'll hear a bit of your voice that's why we call them voiced with voiceless consonants your vocal cord just opens and then the air just goes through without any vibration so we can't hear your voice hence voiceless um, voices and voiced consonants tend to be the same in different languages because it's not a matter of the language rules it's actually a matter of the physicality of how you're making the sound so that doesn't change um, so something we'll look at next week and we can start having a good now is we'll do a bit of practice between voice and voiceless while having our hand on our throat so you just place your hand here and you just do some sounds and you see what vibrates and what doesn't. If you can feel a vibration against your hand, then it's a voiced sound. And if you can't feel a vibration, then it's a voiceless sound. So um, probably the easiest examples to do just tonight, just so you see what it means, and we'll go into more detail with uh, next week. The, the easiest would probably be to compare your zzz sound, like a bee buzzing or a fly buzzing, zzz. If you put your hand, zzz, you should feel some vibration. And if you do its voiceless equivalent, zzz, there's no vibration. Okay, so zzz, zzz. the other way that you can remember it is with voiced consonants. You have an idea of what the voice of the person sounds like with voiceless. You have the suffix less and you don't really know what the voice of the person will sound like when they start actually speaking. So you have the same dist distinction if you do 
If someone shushes you without saying a word, you don't know what their voice will sound like. But if they do zzzz, you have an idea. So instead of talking about soft and harsh, we'll talk about voiced and voiceless consonants. And so your R's, we have that in French, that distinction between your voiced R, which vibrates, and your voiceless which doesn't vibrate. And so you do a voiced R when you have voiced consonants around and you do a voiceless R with voiceless consonants around. Again, we'll have more practice with that next week, but I just wanted to put that up quickly tonight because we're uh, going uh, into a long weekend at my school, which means I have no access to the school computer tomorrow, which means I can't give it another go and hope that this time it works. Uh, and tonight I tried three or four times and it froze for half an hour and then I thought, well, I just give up. So it should all be up next week. But in the meantime, maybe you can just have a go, practice your uh, voiced versus voiceless sounds. You can say random sentences with your hand there and just feel, feel the difference between specific sounds. So you can see what vibrates and what doesn't. And you can bear in mind, if it vibrates, it's voiced. If it doesn't, it's voiceless. And that's it for tonight. Um, this is already six minutes and I wanted to keep it short, so we'll leave it at that. I'm, so, I'm sorry for the mistake I made last week. I hope it won't um, sort of confuse you. If it does, eventually I'll probably take it down, but I don't really know if I want to take it down because mistakes happen and it's just, it's fine. There's no drama to be had about it, to be had about it. Yeah, that was the right phrase. Cool. So that's it for tonight. If you are at my school, have a nice three-day weekend. If you aren't, have a nice two-day weekend when it turns up. Uh, don't forget to be mindful of what you're buying on Black Friday. Think about the planet. Do you really need it? Or can you just go without it? Uh, and try to buy secondhand if you can to help reduce our environmental impact. Um, and then that's it. I'll see you next week, hopefully, for a real On peut le dire episode with a proper intro and outro, because this one doesn't have any. So... Uh, your outro is just, look at that, I've got a beautiful horse painting. Look at that gorgeous thing. That's my intro, outro for today. Do -do -do -do, horse painting. And then this, this is the dog I grew up with. I can't angle properly. There you go. She was called Sheepy and she was the best dog ever. And so I'm leaving you on that note tonight. Okay, bye. Ciao.